This is Susan Bassey with a very special First Amendment investigation from San Jose, California, the heart of Silicon Valley. And this is Robert J. Tennant. Mr. Tennant started his career nearly 50 years ago as a Santa Clara County Sheriff's Deputy. He then worked for a time as a Santa Clara County Prosecutor in the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office. But for the last 40 years, Mr. Tennant has been handling family law cases, divorce, custody, and some probate cases. But for the last seven years, Mr. Tennant has been my attorney. And Mr. Tennant has not only defended me in my divorce, but he has also defended me in a number of civil cases where I have dealt with unfair business practices involving local attorneys. And Mr. Tennant believes in the rule of law and what he does as a lawyer as much as I believe in the freedom of the press and the First Amendment. Now, Mr. Tennant doesn't use a computer. He still dictates to his secretary to get his letters and correspondence done. He doesn't know what YouTube is, and he still reads the San Jose Mercury. And this was a day that Mr. Tennant and I had court. It was October 2nd, 2017. And I want to show you what happened when I was doing my job as he went off to do his. From Georgia. I mean, the guy grew up in, in Humboldt County. Okay, you know, this accent, where did this thing come from? You go, you go to college back east for a little bit, and you don't obtain an accent like that. So the guy's just a fake. He's a, he's a steak oil salesman, and um, they need to run him out of this courthouse. He needs to not be here. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm hoping Santa Clara County starts uh, wising up to. There's been a lot of articles that were written in the Mercury for everything that this guy has done. And the public needs to be more well-informed about this, and we need to get this guy out of here. So again, Scott Larkin, and I absolutely have compassion for anybody that can judge Stuart Scott's uh, program today. I feel really bad for you. You do have the right to refuse your You should have seen what they did to me on Thursday. Uh, the right there. There. They sent him out to intimidate me out in the parking uh, lot. Yeah, so I'm recommending, if anybody's there, it's not like I'm giving legal advice. Now. I'm just giving advice to somebody that just got annihilated by shooting. He's going to beat my ass you know, stand a better chance for another judge. Okay, I mean, this guy's an absolute joke. Right and so then the other one, see that gentleman right there? The he's public. really nice. Can you come with me? Uh, and I'm going to fill the end. He's going to fill the end. He's going to fill the end. He's going to fill the end. All right, thank you. They've harassed me for years. Because I was so concerned with what the police were doing to the protesters that day, I forgot to read the sign. The sign clearly was this man's efforts at finding a civil attorney to help him with a civil complaint against Kaiser involving a false arrest and false imprisonment. He also was upset with the district attorney in the local police department. I'm not sure he ever found a lawyer, and clearly English was not his first language, and I imagine the courts were very frustrating for him. It does state um, the you know, information know. about uh, the permits, who can revoke them, the process. You are, you are yeah, working the police uh, department. So are, are, are you the official? No, I'm a publisher for Ex Parte. Um, My name is Susan uh, Bassett. Content. And so we're out here to what you're protesting about. Praising the judicial system, I'm praising the law really enforcement. Uh, you know, that nothing's going to happen, but when you start throwing out the hard criticism, uh, that's when they, in my situation, I've been arrested. 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 I've been one of the protesters out there informed me that they were threatened by the police and told not to protest out there. Another protester told me that you that you informed them that they were not allowed to have their sign out there. Is that correct? Not true. Could you please tell none me, of, None of that's true right none now. You told that guy to move his sign. Not then you got true. up in my face not out true. in front of you. Not true. I'm exercising Deputy, can I ask your name and your badge right. number? Yes, you can. Deputy Avalos, 1726. Deputy Avalos, 1726? Correct. According to public records, in 2017, Santa Clara County Sheriff's Deputy Avalos, in regular overtime and other pay, made a total of $220,455.95. Okay. 
And can you tell me what you told this man right here? No, I cannot. Nothing happened. Yeah, not, oh, nothing happened right in front of there. You didn't get up in front of my face. I didn't tell you to back up. Listen, I don't want to talk Why to you right now. Why is that acceptable to do I don't to want to talk to you right now? So you serve protest. the public and these are protesters that exercise My supervisor will be here. You can talk to him okay, in a minute. Is that, deputy, is that Sergeant Ray? No, no. My Who's supervisor coming? is coming. You can wait in just Excellent. a minute. I'm happy to, have to talk to him. Out him. Outstanding. People's faces for okay, you got yeah. in my face. Sir, We're not are you trying to intimidate people Not at all. Not, not at all. Do you understand they're not exercising their first amendment I certainly amendment understand right. that. Okay. I certainly understand that. And, and my supervisor will be here if you have further sign. questions. Why did he have to move his sign? I didn't ask him to move his sign. Not at all. Just because he didn't know the laws to protest, why did you do that? Not at all. Sir, do you understand this man? No, ask him. Why don't you ask him? Interview him. I did, sir. Thank you. I didn't hear anything of what he said. Sir, can you tell me your name and your badge number, please? Deputy Gallagher, 1846. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have an instruction to remove journalists or protesters from the courthouse? My supervisor's here now. Why don't you talk to him? Excellent. Who would that be? Talk to him. He's coming. Okay, sir, can you tell me why you're out here protesting today? Uh, just stuff with family court. I had a bad ruling with Judge Stuart Scott, and I've just been out here exercising my First Amendment rights. Sir, did you tell me that the sheriffs were sent to your home by Judge Scott? Uh, correct, yes they were. And I actually was fortunate enough I was able to videotape it, but he sent two Santa Clara County Sheriff's deputies um, to my 88-year-old grandmother's house. And, and it was because I questioned his ruling, I went to get paperwork in court to file a judicial ethics complaint, and that's why I received that retaliation. And it's the same thing that happens out here all the time. And this gentleman today got right up in my face like he was going to knock me out, which is completely unacceptable. And uh, here's the supervisor right now. We have every right to be out here on the street. We're not doing anything wrong. Hi, you're absolutely right. Stop. In the year leading up to this encounter, we had begun to notice a pattern in practice of the Sheriff's Department removing certain protesting groups, especially people protesting the county's family courts, while other groups were allowed to remain and protest in this very same location. So the government, actually, the state government, provided a cost of living for the workers here, and, and they didn't give it to the workers. No, he, he loaned the money out to another county. What about our people here? The executive director and... In, that team got their raises, promotions. That's why they're not out here with the real workers. They need to stay out here until they get what they want. They need to work. The, the court needs the workers or they'll shut down the system. I think they need to shut down the system to show them they're not playing. Leah Roman, I work here at Superior Court and uh, I'm very upset with our administration. I am a courtroom clerk in the courtroom. And why are you upset? Well, number one, the building right behind you has been going up right in front of our faces for the last, what, two years? And um, they've got imported marble, uh, tile for Mexico or Korea or some other country, and um, we haven't got a cost of living raise in eight years. Striking workers protested outside the county's brand new courthouse this morning. The building has become a focal point for many who felt underpaid and undervalued. But sources close to the negotiations say the courthouse also gave management extra incentive to strike a deal, one that would have workers inside rather than protesting outside when the building officially opens Monday. I'm sorry, can you tell me your name and your badge number, please? Sergeant Tran. Sergeant? Tran. Tran, and your badge number? 2003. 2003? 2003. 2003. And do you understand that people have been complaining that they have been harassed by the... Let me talk to him, please. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just out here civilly protesting. This other gentleman was out there with me, and her deputy came out here, told him to remove his sign, get it out of the way, and he couldn't be here, and then he started getting up in my face. And I told him he had a, a space difference. When he gets right up in my face and starts yelling at me, I said, bud, you got to back up. And he says, I'm not going to back up. And he starts going off on me out in front of there. All these other people saw that out there. I'm not blocking the Sir, are you I'm smirking while he's filing a complaint against you? Yeah. Now, why is he getting in my face? Why is he threatening me? Why is he doing that stuff? It's not advising. I'm sorry to say it's not advising. It really isn't. It's enough to file a complaint. You know. I mean, are, are you aware that other protests occurred right over there and those yeah. protesters protesting Judge Persky were allowed to protest on the courthouse area right over there, Sergeant? I mean, just because they're in groups like that. I mean, we might be a protest of one gentleman here and myself, but we shouldn't be treated like that. Scott. Scott. You're fine. You're being the sidewalk. You're doing what you're doing. 
when you're exercising your, your right, that's fine. Just want to let you know. So I'll talk to him, you know, we'll, we'll discuss about what, ta what happened. But it wasn't what happened out on the street that day that was the greatest threat to the First Amendment. It was what happened when we went inside the courthouse. And in my personal divorce case where my publishing business had been investigating the courts, the sheriffs, and the DA's office, Deputy Avalos was assigned to the courtroom. And he watched me and Mr. Tennant and relentlessly harassed us about our cell phones and whether or not we were recording. And he also served an order on Mr. Tennant that was not served on any other attorneys, an order that would prove the selective prosecution of the sheriffs, the DA, and the judges in that courthouse, where they were selectively prosecuting me and my associates, while others were allowed to protest, take photographs in the courthouse, and work to get a judge recalled. And while it appeared that Patricia Lucas and Deputy Avalos were working overtime to violate the First Amendment rights and selectively prosecute people inside the courthouse, it was because we had two photographers there on this day that I learned that they were also working to silence dissent to violate First Amendment rights and to chill speech outside the courthouse, and that Patricia Lucas had issued an order in February of 2017 designed to do just that. I'll give you the copy of the order, but there's actually an order about disturbing the order. I have the full page order. Okay. Nothing supersedes my First Amendment rights. So that stuff was designed to intimidate people from protesting out in front of here. Excuse me, can you tell me what order you're talking you about? Um, I have it over there. I have the whole May, page may I get a copy of that? That's what I got on Friday when they came out to also intimidate me over here on the other side. And while it was shocking to me what was going on inside the courthouse that appeared to be efforts to chill First Amendment rights, it was more shocking to me what was going on outside the courthouse, where sheriff's deputies, including Sh Deputy Roger Winslow, who was walking with me here, appeared to be injecting themselves in First Amendment issues related to what protesters were protesting. And Roger Winslow on this day, who was involved in a political campaign himself to unseat the sheriff and who also ran an anonymous blog and website, clearly knew who I was and who my associate was because I gave him my card. Roger Winslow clearly knew I was a member of the press, a publisher and an investigative reporter, because my card said so, and he clearly looked at my card. He also clearly had a relationship with this protester that made me feel very uncomfortable when I viewed this video later on. Roger Winslow is actively involved in the Sheriff's Department and has a political agenda of his own. He gave my business card to his supervisor, who kept his card in his pocket. They knew I was a publisher, they knew I was a journalist, and they knew I was investigating the local courts. And a month and a few weeks after that encounter, and the police officers clearly knew that I was a journalist and a publisher and an investigative reporter, I was in the family courthouse conducting research when several police officers came in to the court file room and were involved in excessive force and abuse of power involving the same protester. Only this time, when I tried to film them, they seized my phone, broke my hand, and unlawfully searched my phone as well. And as further evidence of the pattern and practice of Santa Clara County violating the First Amendment rights and retaliating against members of the press that they disfavor, Roger Winslow arrested me for violating a local rule and taking this photograph of a journalist standing in front of an American flag on the administrative floors of the family courthouse. And so while Robert J. Tennant has protected my First Amendment rights and my rights to work as a publisher and an investigative journalist, it surely has taken a toll on him based on the conduct of individuals working in Santa Clara County that don't seem to be 
mindful of what the First Amendment means and how it is applied. And so this video serves as lesson number four to Ward Penfold. This is your lesson on the First Amendment and our right to associate and our right to a free press.